Hey, what's up guys, MKBHD here, and today we're gonna be talking about Ultrabooks, because to be totally honest, Ultrabooks are pretty awesome. I can't even count on two hands how many world's thinnest Ultrabooks we saw crowned at CES 2012 this year, uh, but if you know what an Ultrabook is before watching this video, if you know the definition of an Ultrabook, I dare you to leave it in a comment. I mean, obviously I can't verify that I didn't watch this video first, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. So there are certain things that make an Ultrabook and that actually make it different from a netbook or a laptop or a notebook or other stuff like that. In order to be an Ultrabook, you need to meet a certain set of specifications as defined by Intel, who pretty much came up with the category as a sort of a marketing project to compete with the MacBook Air, which incidentally isn't technically an Ultrabook, but we'll get into that in a second. If it doesn't meet these specs, it just isn't an Ultrabook. So besides their Intel processors, uh, there's a size requirement. Can't be fat. Ultrabooks with a 14 inch screen or larger, it can be no more than 21 millimeters thick. And an Ultrabook that's 13 inches or smaller can be no more than 18 millimeters thick. Also to be in this Ultrabook category, you have to have a battery life of at least five hours and you have to resume from hibernation in seven seconds or less. And these requirements can actually change as time goes on to keep them ahead of the curve and to keep them just as sexy as the newest MacBook Air. There are no storage requirements right now, uh, but according to Wikipedia, which is a reliable source, teachers, uh, the next round of Ultrabooks will be running mostly Ivy Bridge processors and will have a minimum of 16 gigs of storage. Is a MacBook Air an Ultrabook? That's a question we get a lot. Technically, no, because Apple doesn't use the little bit of proprietary software Intel requires called Rapid Start, which is what helps them resume from sleep so fast. But the MacBook Air resumes from sleep that fast anyway, so I'd say it fits mostly all the, the specs to be an Ultrabook. Close enough, Apple. Close enough. And also, Google's Chromebook. Is this an Ultrabook? Well, no, they're just a little bit, a couple of millimeters too thick actually to be an Ultrabook right now. And also while Windows isn't a requirement, these are running Chrome OS and they don't use Intel's Rapid Boot and they use Intel Atom processors. So basically these fall into the netbook category, not the Ultrabook category. So there you have it, those are Ultrabooks. Uh, pretty simple definition to be honest. Um, I'm really looking forward to the next generation of Ultrabooks to see just how well they evolve. If you have an Ultrabook, let me know which one you have because there aren't a lot of Ultrabooks out right now, so if, I wanna see if it meets the requirements and I'll definitely check it out and give it a look. Now, if you didn't see my last video, it's right there, <laughs> where we got busy with the Asus ZenBook UX31, which is one of the best Ultrabooks out there. Pretty much a benchmark for what Ultrabooks should be in this generation, so check that out if you haven't already seen it. Pretty short video. I'm going on vacation next week, so if you guys uh, are ready to take a spring break vacation like I am, enjoy the week off. I'm gonna be taking uh, my duties and all sorts of things down to the south half of the United States for a week. So either way, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. See you in about a week and I'll talk to you later. Peace.